All right, so I was working on this customer's machine and uh, I just figured this would be a good thing to show on the video. And so I didn't go any further. So far what I've done is I've taken apart the basic pieces of the sewing machine to get to uh, down here. The problem was that the needle, the needle that was in there was bent pretty bad. And uh, when you operate this machine, see the needle hits the plate. Let's bring you in. So you should be able to see that where the needle hits the plate. This is a It doesn't matter if the needle's left or right. This is a situation where the timing is not correct. Uh, there is a possibility that it could be needle height that's not correct, and one thing you can do to check that is you can see if you can get it to go down there. So if I go backwards, I can get it to go down. But we're not even anywhere near the hook when the needle comes down. Let's see if I can show you that a little bit better. So the needle and the hook do not meet. So we have a timing issue on this machine. So what I need to do is take this machine apart. And one thing that I'm noticing already is there's a bulge right here. So this machine has been apart before, which could be why the timing is off. Um, you never know when you're getting into a machine like this. So for this one, I'm pretty sure I've got to take these knobs off. I think the reverse has to come off in order to get this machine apart. But I'm 90% sure these knobs have to come off, so we're going to try that first. All right, so as you pull this apart, you'll notice that you have, right over here, you've got a connector. So you wanna be careful and not rip this thing apart. You wanna undo this connector properly. So it's got a little tab right here, and then it comes right apart. So we don't need the back of this. So this is a plastic frame. It's pretty rigid plastic, but it is plastic, so not the greatest. So here's one place where you can do the timing adjustment. Looks like I got a straight shot through here with a screwdriver. You just have to be careful in wherever you're adjusting, make sure that there aren't flat spots on the rotor, which means that's the only place that these screws can be. But I don't see that in this case, so. That right there rotates freely. So now what I'm doing is I'm moving the hook over here independently of the needle up here. So this separated the upper shaft going across here from the lower shaft down here. Um, actually, in this case, there is no lower shaft. It separates the upper shaft from the hook. And that's how your hook timing adjustment is made. So now we wanna put it in the right place. Now this could be tricky because when the hook's in the right place, you may not be able to get to these screws. And we'll figure that out here in just a second. So 
So now I want to adjust this hook. Let's see. And I can just turn it by hand till that hook is in the right spot, right behind where the needle is. And I'm going to bring down the needle till it's coming up. Put that hook right behind it. So you adjust the needle till it's on the bottom and then you bring it up a little bit and then you put that hook right behind it. That's where your timing should be as long as your needle height is correct. And now we can tighten those screws in the bottom. And if you look, they are hard to get to. So I want this to be flush right here because it'll go in and out a little bit. You don't want to be, if it goes in, it'll be too difficult for the rotor to turn. So I'm going to get this just tight enough with this little tiny screwdriver such that when I turn the knob here, this whole assembly should turn. And then I tighten this one, so I want to bring it around to the other one. And I want to tighten this one now. This one. So these two are tight and you want to make sure you get them good and tight because um, that's how your timing gets off is if one of two things happens either that slips right there or you also you have this rubber belt if the if the belt skips over some teeth, that could cause that problem too. So now let's look at our timing. So now we don't hit the hook assembly at all when we're going up and down. And that hook is crossing right behind that needle, and the needle's on the upstroke. If you want to learn more about the timing of your sewing machine, I have another video which talks about timing of sewing machines, and that one is right up here. And now it's time to clean this machine lubricate it, put it all back together and see how we're doing. So this machine, we've gone through the machine, the inside of the machine is all cleaned up. We've cleaned it, lubricated, adjusted. So the timing we had to adjust on this machine, uh, this plate here had to be adjusted because it was bent. So this side was up a little bit. We fixed that. And now we want to sew to make sure that we made the correct adjustments. So here we go. See what we did. Okay, I don't know if you saw that, but it was picking the thread. It was, or not the thread, but the actual fabric. So if you look on this fabric, you'll see lines here going across. So this is a this is something I've seen before. And what happens is this is where the needle goes in, but it's um, it's got the tip is messed up. It's either blunt or it has a burr on the end of it. And 
what it does is it catches the little filaments of thread in your fabric. You know, these little guys right here, these little tiny little filaments, catches one of those and then pulls it so that it'll pucker your fabric and create these little lines. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but um, all right, let's give this a try again, see what we get. So that is much better. Yeah, we didn't get any picking that time of the fabric. Fabric fed straight. If you didn't notice when it was picking, it was pulling the fabric off to the side. You can see that on that line right there when I went in reverse. And that can happen just with a needle. And when you saw before, the needle was dragging across the hook, the metal part of the hook, and that was enough, even when I was testing it just by hand, it was enough to ruin that needle. So there we go. So we've cleaned up the inside of the machine. We set the timing. Uh, this machine, the timing was off. You watched me do that. The other thing that we had to do was adjust this uh, needle plate because it was popping up over here on the right side. So we fixed that. Um, we just did a little mechanical adjustments there on the plate. So now it's actually flat and that side works. We put a new needle in here twice now because the first time it was picking on fabric. We're gonna do a straight stitch, see how well it does. It's not bad. And then when you want to see how well a machine is going to work, you want to put on the widest stitch for your zigzag and you want a low feed rate and that's going to be the hardest thing for your machine. And then we want to double over our fabric to give us some extra layers to make this not pucker so much. So I'll turn down the tension just a tiny bit. So this stitch will tell you if, if there's a problem with your, I think I did that a little too late going backwards, but this stitch will tell you if there's a problem with your timing. If your timing's even a little bit off, you'll end up with something that looks very similar to this right here. So this is where our timing was just a little bit off and it was missing, it was skipping stitches every so often on the one side. So now what we have is a full stitch. We're not skipping any stitches. Tensions look pretty good. And this machine is ready to go back to the customer once we button it back up and finish cleaning the outside of the machine. Mm -hmm.